The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected woman, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. Welcome to the night section. Now, this is a very controversial subject and this might become a series where I actually dive into the treatment of particular black women in the music industry because I think there needs to be an honest discussion about it. And this is particular to black women that I've noticed over the years, specifically in hip hop, but this also happens across genres. If you guys have any artists you want me to talk about in this series, please leave them in the comments below and I'll choose one for another video. But today I wanted to discuss Megan Thee Stallion, which is an interesting case. So just a very brief background for those of you guys who are not familiar with her. Megan Thee Stallion is an African-American rapper, singer and songwriter from Houston, Texas. Megan dropped her first single, Like a Stallion, in 2016, and within just a couple of years started garnering mainstream attention, especially after the drop of her second EP, Tina Snow, in 2018, and her debut commercial mixtape Fever in 2019. Since then, she's exceeded all expectations and surpassed most of her male counterparts in her XXL freshman class of 2019 in terms of mainstream success, and she's one of the few people in the hip-hop game to win herself a Beyonce feature on the remix of Savage. The original song was released on March 6th of 2020 as part of her third EP, Sugar, and a surprise collaboration remix featuring Beyonce would later be released a little more than a month later on April 29th, which would become a nice addition to her debut album, Good News, which would drop on November 20th of the same year. In the past two years, it seems that Megan Thee Stallion has just exploded, unlike anything we've ever seen before, especially with an African-American female rapper in this new age of social media. But as we know, like with anything, there is no smooth sailing. Megan Thee Stallion, unfortunately, in the biggest year of her career in 2020, has been subjugated to borderline smear campaigns, intense scrutiny, vitriol, misogyny, misogynoir, the whole nine. And this has mainly been coming from the black community. Now, this begs the question, why? And some of you might be thinking that this is just the natural process of fame. I mean, every famous person gets hate, right? True. But never do we victim blame the Ariana Grandes or question the femininity of the Miley Cyruses or police the sexuality of the Katy Perrys or expect the little pumps of the world to be all lyrical miracle. There is this strange fixation predominantly within the black community online to hold black women in the industry to unrealistic standards while attempting to tear them down. Unfortunately, this is just a manifestation of what has been happening for years due to colonialism and white supremacy. The only difference is that now regular people like you and I have the platform to actually spread our internalized massage noir. Just as a side note, massage noir is a term coined by queer black feminist Moya Bailey to describe, quote, the specific hatred, dislike, distrust and prejudice toward black women. The term was created to acknowledge how racism and misogyny intersect in oppressing black women. Examples of misogynoir in everyday life are as follows. 1. Black girls are often seen as older, more mature, and are even sexualized compared to their white female counterparts, and for that reason are often dismissed in cases of sexual assault. 2. Black women are viewed as overly sexual, wearing the same clothes as their white counterparts just because it might fit their bodies differently. 3. The quote-unquote strong black women narrative or stereotype where black women oftentimes aren't allowed to express normal human emotions in any capacity, and if they express anger, for example, they are deemed as quote-unquote the angry black woman. 4. And lastly, the masculization of black women, particularly darker-skinned women. In other words, in the context of mainstream media, we don't ever see darker skinned women as the damsel in distress or the sensitive and nurturing woman. She's always portrayed as the angry, vindictive or aggressive woman. A prime example is Serena Williams. Due to the color of her skin, as well as her athletic build, people have decided to masculinize her, especially when she's shown her competitive spirit, which sometimes meant in the heat of the moment yelling at the umpire, which has been done across the board from both men and women in competitive tennis. People have thrown transphobic rhetoric, accusing her of being a man and deemed her not attractive in the conventional sense until she got married to a white man. But that's another conversation for another another time. Today, however, I wanted to discuss some of the instances where I personally saw the maltreatment of Megan Thee Stallion and how this all plays into the different forms of massage noir in three 
parts. Number one, Nikki versus Cardi. So as we know, there's been a debate ever since 2017 about Cardi B quote unquote overthrowing Nicki Minaj as the queen of rap. From 2017 to 2019, it felt like everyone turned on Nicki and seems like she was blackballed entirely. Cardi B was pitted against Nicki and we don't know for sure if this was direct beef or if this was another case of he said she said industry politics and the media just doing what the media does and capitalizing off of it. But what we do know for sure is that when Megan Thee Stallion started emerging on the scene, by public opinion, she had to choose either or. In an Instagram Live back in July of 2019, we hear Megan Thee Stallion supposedly throwing shots at Cardi B. Stop fucking playing with us! I rebuke it! Stay in the name of Jesus! Stop fucking playing with us! Stop fucking playing with us! Stop fucking playing with us! No, I got one motherfucking wrong thing. I'm gonna go right some shit. <laughs> As you heard in the last part, she said, I'm gonna go write some ish, which was obviously interpreted as her throwing shots at Cardi B, as most of us know by now, Cardi B doesn't write all of her music. After that live, we know that Nicki Minaj jumped on the Hot Girl Summer track for their first feature together. The controversy comes in when the single WAP featuring Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion dropped the following year in 2020, where it seems as though Megan Thee Stallion has betrayed her quote unquote bestie Nicki Minaj. As in the live, we saw both of them get very friendly with one another. I've heard a lot of people call Megan Thee Stallion fake and that she's a fraud, everything and anything under the sun to criticize her intentions and authenticity. The problem, however, is for one, we don't know who exactly she was referring to in that live. Two, it's unfair to make her choose between two artists that she highly respects. And three, I think people are forgetting that this is all a business. Just because Megan Thee Stallion is friendly and cordial with Nicki Minaj doesn't mean she's all of a sudden owed a sense of loyalty. All we do know for sure is that this was a business relationship. And I think it's unfair that first of all, why we must always pit black female rappers against one another, we do not see this at all when talking about the Drakes and the Kendricks. Somehow, they're all able to exist. But for some reason, every time a black female rapper emerges, it's all of a sudden the queen of rap this or the queen of rap that. And the constant in all of this is that all of these women happen to be black or black passing. This is clear evidence of massage noir present in hip hop. Number two, lyrical miracle. I've noticed that the young thugs and futures can exist without us understanding a word that is being said in their songs or even knowing if they are rapping or singing in the English language. However, when it comes to female rap artists, all of a sudden we are expecting a think piece on consciousness itself. An example in Megan's case is when we heard the song Shots Fired off of her debut album Good News where she's airing out her grievances over the Biggie Smalls Who Shot Ya Sample. A lot of naysayers on the internet, of course, were claiming that the song was whack. These claims have been made the entire course of her career, and everyone is entitled to their opinion. You don't have to like the music just because Megan happens to be a black woman, but it's this weird hypocrisy where we can enjoy music from several of her male counterparts who aren't on a Jay-Z level per se without scrutinizing them so heavily. But when it comes to Megan, we hold her to such a high standard where she isn't allowed to just be average. But she's also been specifically scrutinized for being quote unquote hypersexual and making songs with no substance. This is not 100% inaccurate, but why do we not keep the same energy again for her male counterparts? when the typical rapper raps about sexual things all the time. It seems as though a lot of us are threatened by a black woman who isn't a lighter shade, having ownership of her sexuality and expressing it without a second thought. And that's because historically black women didn't own their bodies. And this is a bias so deeply embedded into our psyches that a lot of us have projected outwards onto the black women in music or in Hollywood. Number three, Tori Lanes. All of us by now probably heard about the situation that went down. For those of you guys who haven't, to keep it short, Megan was shot in the foot allegedly by the Canadian rapper, singer, songwriter Tory Lanes, who by the way, was the only person carrying a firearm. This occurred the night of July 12 of 2020 after leaving a house party at the Jenners. The aftermath was all caught on tape as they were asked to leave their vehicle by police. And we saw Megan's foot leaking of blood. 
Megan was silent on the situation until rumors and blogs started to run with multiple twisted narratives that allegedly Tory Lane's team had stirred up. And she cleared the air on an Instagram live by point blank stating, you shot me. Obviously, Tory Lanez had denied these claims. Now, in a typical domestic situation, especially when it's a man committing an act of violence on a woman, most of us have the sense to believe the victim, or at least give the victim the benefit of the doubt. And I mean, in this situation, again, Tory Lanez was the one charged with possession of a firearm, so most people would be able to put two and two together. But in a turn of events, shockingly to some, but not to me, Megan was made out to be the perpetrator in these online streets. Confusing to say the least, but is it? I've seen multiple people on all social media platforms voice their opinions on the debacle, siding with Tory and slandering Megan the Stallion, calling her a liar, essentially victim blaming, to the point where Megan actually took a picture of her foot and posted it online in an attempt to show people that she in fact wasn't lying. But it seems that it made things worse. People became private investigators on this case. And it seems that all of the resentment that people were holding on to came out full force. But now let me ask you guys this. Would people have called Selena Gomez or Ariana Grande a liar if they were in that same situation? Let's be real, probably not. The truth of the matter is, Megan Thee Stallion is a stallion, tall, voluptuous female, and a darker skinned black woman, which basically codes as the aggressor. Remember how I mentioned that black women aren't allowed to be the damsel in distress? In this very case, everyone decided to do mental gymnastics instead of just believing her. And that's the plight of a lot of darker skinned, tall black women. And we see it in real time, not to mention the slurs and the insults that came out of that situation calling her a man and all around trying to justify why she needed to get shot. And unfortunately, most of these comments came from the online black community and incited by online black media outlets. And then we wonder why black artists don't want to talk to black media on the red carpet. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and engage about anything you like throughout the video as well. Please leave a like and hit the bell notification if you do want to see more. Night section out.